The burning of a Quran from Norway in Sweden. Freedom of expression. Every once in a while, we hear a little munchkin puppy who wants to burn the Quran. You see, when you're broken spiritually and you're defeated intellectually, there's nothing you can do but hold the Quran and burn it. They're exposing their weakness and declaring their defeat against a book that they cannot defeat intellectually. When the hater picks up the Quran and they start opening the Quran and they try their best to find verses and context that makes Islam and Quran looks really bad, but then they can't find these verses, they actually find every single chapter, the 113th chapter from the 114th chapter of the Quran, it starts off with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. When the Quran talks about uplifting your status and being good to people and to hold your anger, to forgive people, to do your charity and to uplift the name of God Almighty. All these goodness from the Quran. A hater could not stand these verses because it disproves their idea about Islam. So they don't know what to do. So they take the Quran and they burn it. Let's now shift our focus to Sweden. In a shocking decision, Sweden has now granted a dangerous instigator permission to burn the Holy Quran. The same country that does not allow you to burn the LGBT flag. This hypocrisy and double standard that is practiced in Sweden. The same Sweden, by the way, where there was a famous debate that happened between Sheikh Ahmed Didad and Pastor Stanley, where Ahmed Didad proved that the Quran is a revelation of God. And he disproved the opponent with their Bible and it contradicts various versions of the Bible itself. These pins that I have, pins, pins. Now, to show you that these pins are not really pins. These are not identical. There is some deception here. Word for word the same. Yes. But sir, I'm not reading from the book of Isaiah. I'm reading from the book of Kings. And my message to Sweden, specifically to the Swedish people, my home country here in Kuwait, currently sending you 100,000 copies of the Quran in the Swedish language. Just in case another cute little <coughs> munchkin would like to burn the Quran, you will have 99,999 additional copy to keep with you. What you're actually doing when you're burning the Quran is you are giving the Muslims a marketing exposure that is worth hundreds of millions of dollars, where all the news media outlets start talking about such an incident of the burning of the Quran. Then everyone wants to know why is that person burning the Quran? So they purchase a Quran or they start asking questions about the Quran, then they're shocked how peaceful this religion is and how it's calling people to the right path. And for the Muslims in Sweden and the Islamic centers, the masjids, prepare yourself to receive and accommodate new Muslims. Because according to statistics, a lot of people will be starting to embrace Islam in Sweden, inshallah. So burn the Quran better than keeping it with your infidel, impurity, nijis hands. Burn the Quran because the ashes will not remove the verses of God Almighty. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that God revealed to him that he said that I sent you a book that no water could wash out its words, meaning the water could not wash out the ink. If we burn every single book on earth, take the ashes, throw it in the ocean, the only book that will come back alive is the Quran. <laughs> قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس Hundreds and millions of people memorize the Quran cover to cover. The Quran is a book that is preserved in the hearts of Muslims. Only one version, same language, that is memorized and read and recited the same way it's recited in Africa, 
is the same way it's recited in America, is the same way it's recited in Russia, it's the same way it's recited in the far corners of the earth, and there's no difference. The same Quran that transformed Arabia into a Granada at one hand and Delhi in the other hand and established an empire of faith. Such a powerful book that transformed illiterate tribes in the middle of the desert of Arabia who knew nothing about life, elevated them on top of the Persian Empire and the Roman Empire. Such a book that the Western world is using its discoveries and scholars to establish their academia from biology to chemistry to all the inventions that they claim it's from them it is actually from muslim scholars who invented these things using the quran when they graduate from the phd system which muslim scholars invented ilm and ijazah you are forced to respect the quran and place it on top of your head just like how when you graduate but you don't know why you're wearing a hat that looks like this this symbolizes the Muslim scholars in the time of Andalusia and onward where they used to place the Quran on top of their turban when they graduate and quote a verse from the Quran that says فوق كل ذي علم عليم Above every thy knowledge, thy knowledge. Such a Quran that no human being can ever put together. Wallah, there is a power in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us and it is between our hands. What is the Qur'an generally speaking? The Qur'an itself is the final revelation from God Almighty to all mankind. The Qur'an is not a speech to a specific group. It's not a speak speech to only Muslims or Arabs or specific people. The Qur'an says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, O human beings, A'budu rabbakum, alladhi khalaqakum, walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O mankind, O people, worship your Lord. This is the final call to mankind, the final revelation revelation, the final testament from God Almighty. Worship your Lord, the one who created you and the one who created those who came before you so that you can obtain piety and the right consciousness of God Almighty. But what makes the Quran so powerful? In the beginning of the book, God Almighty said that this book has no doubt. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty said, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِصُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ وَادْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you have any doubt in regards to this revelation that is from God Almighty, then produce a chapter like it and collect your helpers and your witnesses. But if you won't be able to do it, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا And you will never ever be able to do it. فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ then prepare yourself or be conscious of hellfire and the danger that you're putting yourself through. This challenge was out for the past 1,400 years ago, ever since the Quran was revealed to mankind. It is a book that uplifted the human being, gave us all the answers of all the problems we have in this world. It is a book that prophesies things that happened after the Quran was revealed, and all of those prophecies happened after the Quran until today and onwards. It is a book of signs, the sign and miracles and wonders that is mentioned in the Quran that goes hand in hand with human beings discoveries today. This is a powerful book that no human being could ever succeed in trying to defeat it intellectually. It is the speech of God Almighty, our Creator. 
the creator of the heavens and the earth. A book that talks about the ozone layer and how we made your sky a protective ceiling, the atmosphere. How could Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would have known such a fact 1,400 years ago? Not only that, it talks about the black hole, it talks about things that a human being could not discover 1,400 years ago. It talks about the history of things that happened thousands of years before, such as in the time of the Pharaoh and his minister, Haman, and it was the opposite of what is actually mentioned in the Bible. But how could a human being know when this information was recently discovered today? And there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miracles and wonders and signs in the Quran that proves to you that this is the actual revelation from God Almighty. Quick couple of examples. The Quran says, Bala qadirina ala an nusawwiya banana that indeed we are capable to make a unique creation in the very tips of mankind. Today we discovered the fingerprints. 70 or 100 years ago in Argentina, the fingerprints was discovered. Quick question, how could Prophet Muhammad would have known such a fact? Today you boast about the Big Bang Theory, how everything were once joined together and, and it was exploded. Well, in the Quran it says, have note that disbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were once joined together and we split them asunder. And we made from one Water every living thing, will then they not believe? What bothers the non-Muslims, specifically those who have Christian background, is that the Quran is a book that is preserved and kept. It is not a book with unknown authors. Matthew who? Mark who? Luke who? And John who? What were their last names? When did they write? Did they know Jesus Christ? Did they walk with Jesus Christ? Did they eat with Jesus Christ? Did they talk with Jesus Christ? Did they even meet Jesus Christ? The answer is no, 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 no. It is not a book that is written by a self-appointed apostle. Now this is the Paul who has rewritten the life of Jesus Christ. It is not a book that talks ill about prophets and messengers. Like Noah was drunk and he cursed his own son, therefore black people are cursed, things like that. The Quran says the opposite of these things. And it uplifted the names of the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of God Almighty. It is not a book that talks ill about David. It's not a book that talks ill about Job and Jacob and other prophets, it uplifts them. It does not say that they were drunk and they commit incest with their daughters. It does not mention these kind of things. Astaghfirullah. This is why the haters hate what the Quran mentions, because it uplifts the prophets and messengers without any contradiction. It is not an encyclopedia of incest. It is not a book that shows you and teaches you how to rape like the Bible does today. Not only rape, how to rape your own sister if you want to, it's given to you in detail. If you want to rape your own sister. One of the sons of David, he sent you an example. What would you must do if you want to rape your own sister? Gang rape is there. A son goes and prohibits the 10 of his father's wives, 10 in a row. I'm telling you, this is in the holy book. A Christian lady here in the UK, here in the UK, she wrote a letter. She says, ban the book. Ban the Bible. What it has, ban it. But of course, your salvation. So, for my Muslim brothers and sisters, don't feel sad and emotional. Emotions is a natural feeling. We don't let, we won't, we don't let anyone burn our book. And we stand against anyone who wants to attack us. We're not a religion that turns the other cheek. We're not a religion that enslaves our people and teaches us that black people are slaves because they were cursed by Noah and brainwashing them for hundreds of years and turn your left cheek and turn, give them the other cheek. No, Islam teaches you how to speak up for yourself and stand against anyone who transgresses against you. And this is what we've seen from Malcolm X and how he taught the people in America and fueled the civil rights movement in the 60s. This is the fruits of the Quran. In Harvard, once they took a verse in the Quran and they placed it on top, where it mentions that it has the, the best quote and statement, according to them, that shows the foundation of justice, that you should actually witness against your own family and parents, even if it's your parents, when you're speaking about the truth. Wallah, there is a power in the Quran. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us and it is between our hands. My Muslim brothers and sisters, when you see someone burning the Quran, this should remind you of the power of the Quran and the weakness that they have. What you should do is take it as a reminder and start reading the Quran and reciting the Quran and living according to the Quran so that you can have izzah and you can have honor. So take the Quran, and smile, knowing that this is their weakness and knowing that they have no kujja, they have no burhan, they have no intellectual premise that they have against the Quran, therefore they go and burn it. These words that is uttering from my mouth in regards to the Quran is burning the fuel of the hater from inside. There's nothing they can do. This podium is open for a debate if anyone wants to challenge the Quran. And as a layman myself, I can only mention a couple of miracles of the Quran. There are Muslim scholars that can refute all the misconceptions that people have. So. Next time you think about burning the Quran, think about placing it on top of your head because that's where it belongs. Wassalamu ala man al-huda. If you feel like the content in this specific video represents you and elevates the Quran and gives izzah to the Quran in regards to our faith, then share this video to one person and one person only. Because if we have a thousand viewers and each person shares this video with one person, the thousand will become two thousand, four thousand, eight thousand, sixteen thousand, thirty-two, sixty-four, uh, one twenty-eight, two fifty-six, five twelve, and then one million views. Just from the this is called the double effect. So don't let this effect stop with you. If you feel like this content is representing you by any chance then just share this video at least with one person and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.